allow me to take you back in time. 1986, Dragon Quest is released to great acclaim on the Famicom. 1987, Final Fantasy is released to an unsuspecting Japanese public, also on the Famicom. 1988, Sega turned the medieval dungeon crawling RPG genre on its head with Fantasy Star, a sprawling sci-fi odyssey. Then, in 1989, Sega discontinued the Master System in Japan to focus attention on the upcoming 16-bit machine, the Mega Drive. Now jump back to the present. Dragon Quest and even Final Fantasy are held up as classics, the stuff of gaming excellence, and everyone clamours for new releases. Yet the Fantasy Star franchise, despite its richness and its history, Fantasy Star 4 being one of the best 16-bit RPGs of all time, and Elise, the star of this game, one of the first major female leads in a video game. But probably surprisingly to you, she wasn't alone. But if I had to say what my favourite female gaming icon of that era was, I would say former Page 3 stunner Maria Whittaker, who in 1987, despite the cold, would appear on the cover of Palace Software's controversial smash hit, Barbarian. What a trooper. And let's not forget Samantha Fox's strip poker. That game made a man out of me. But back to what I was talking about earlier. The Fantasy Star franchise is in very real danger of being forgotten. Dismissed it seems by both gamers and Sega. At present it seems more likely that Sega will give us a new console or Shenmue 3 before giving us a new decent single player Fantasy Star title. Now you're probably thinking, I owned this game or played it back in the day, but you're wrong. I did play Fantasy Star 2, but unfortunately that was the Japanese version. And despite all the story and character dialogue surprisingly being in completely in English. The battle screens however, were not. So equipping anything or using items had me acting like Jack the Ripper and just taking a wild stab in the dark. I couldn't tell a healing item from a weapon of mass destruction. No, my first meaningful exposure to this series came in the form of Fantasy Star Collection on a Game Boy Advance, which I bought just to play Fantasy Star 2 and 3 properly, but also included Fantasy Star 1, although noticeably Fantasy Star 4 was absent. And I tried Fantasy Star 1 just to see what it looked like, I really wasn't expecting anything. And to my great surprise, I was actually blown away by it. No way could this be a port of a Master System game, I thought, with its 3D dungeon sections and animated enemies. I became obsessed with it, finally picking up a copy on the Master System and finding everything I enjoyed on the GBA present. Only now instead of playing it on a 3 inch screen, I could play it on my big TV. Now this video is not a review, in a review you can't show bias, and I'm biased towards this game. This video is my declaration of love to the Fantasy Star series as a whole, with the first game singled out, because it might not look like much now in an era of high definition graphics and surround sound, but it possesses a quality that's lacking with many modern games, and that's charm. It's a charming game. I love its sci-fi themes, its random battles, its planet hopping, I love its characters and its story. And hopefully for anyone watching this, this video might have encouraged a few of you to blow the dust off your old Master System or Sega Mega Drive and relive some memories. Or if you've never played a Fantasy Star game, download an emulator and a ROM of this game and have a bash that bit of gaming history.